life gives you plenty of choices. So you have to choose the best. At St. Dominic, we give our students the best education they can get and equip them to reach their full potential and fulfill their dreams in their chosen field of expertise. Our education is beyond basic. In preschool, grade school, and junior high school, we instill the necessary foundation of a balanced EQ and IQ quality of education. We set the bar higher and make sure Dominicans excel in every aspect to prepare them well in their life. Parents envision their children to reach their full potential and someday become role models and ideal citizens of our country and even of Asia. This vision has become our mission since St. Dominic was first founded in 2003 and to this day, St. Dominic has mastered the quality of education that we offer from basic education to graduate studies. St. Dominic continuously hones all passionate achievers to become the professionals they dream to become. Because your vision is our mission.
Pleasant afternoon to all of you who are with us today. Welcome to today's webinar, Digitalization for Institutional Sustainability, Bangladesh and Turkey Perspective. I am Samantha Leo Campo from College of Pharmacy. Ma'am, can you unmute your mic po? Ma'am Rosel. I'm sorry, and I'm Rosel Gutierrez from the College of Nursing, and we are your moderators for today. So we have an interesting topic to be discussed today. We have come to a point where everything is done online, from ordering your food to doing business and school transactions. 
Given our situation today with COVID-19 pandemic and the physical distancing protocol, we have been pushed to go in a transition and make everything digital. It is when we use digital technologies to change business model to provide new revenue and value producing opportunities. One of the advantages of digitalization is that it promises much needed improvement in the delivery of services, like in our institution. The enrollment process and even library processes are now available online. Not to mention, digital platforms are more encouraging to the youth like our participants here with us today. And of course, our institution, St. Dominic College of Asia, provides different ways to cope up with a new normal to sustain the needs of its employees and students, finding a modern solution for a modern problem at this digital age. And with this lineup of speakers that we have, I'm sure our participants we will learn a lot today. For the information of everyone, this webinar is brought to you by St. Dominic College of Asia School of Health Science Profession. And under SHSP, we have the following courses. BS Pharmacy. BS Medical Technology. BS Radiologic Technology. BS Nursing. BS Biology. And BS Physical Therapy. So to start our program, may we call our Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Melly Nelly T. Roa, to give her welcome remarks. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome most specially our guest speaker, Dr. Pinar Elbasan from uh, um, Istanbul Aydın University. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. I would like to welcome as well Mr. Syed Raihan Ol Islam from Daffodil International University, Bangladesh. Indeed, the uh, COVID-19 have brought us have uh, brought us together through virtual, and the uh, the theme for this event was conceptualized because of the unexpected circumstances brought about by the pandemic. Indeed, we are now in the new millennia, and digitalization, most especially for institutional sustainability, is a must nowadays. And Without further ado, I would like to welcome you all. We should start because this is a very interesting topic. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you for that warm greetings, BP Roa. A reminder to our participants, you can send your questions during the presentation in the comment section. Then we are going to collect and let our speakers address them during the question and answer portion of our program. Also, before the seminar ends, an evaluation form link will be sent in the comment section. We would appreciate your feedback regarding our event today. You will also receive an e-certificate by completing the said form. At this point, to introduce our first speaker, may I call, call my co-moderator today, Professor Ocampo? Thank you, Professor. It is my pleasure to introduce our first speaker for today. Our speaker is currently leading the international affairs of Daffodil International University, Bangladesh as assistant director. Since 2013, he has been coordinating international mobility for teachers, students, and staff with global partners, scholarship, Erasmus Plus projects, and international internship at DIU. He also supervises international cooperations relation and in communications on behalf of DIU as well as setting up summer and winter programs arranged for international students. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Sayed Raihan Ol Islam. Hello, thank you very much for your introduction. Uh, a very good afternoon. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, Doc, you are audible. Po. Good afternoon to everyone in Philippines. And uh, I'm very glad to join the St. Dominic uh, College of Asia today for this webinar. And I would like to share the best practices of uh, uh, Daffodil International University in terms of digitalization. I know. Should I start? Yes, take it away. Okay, thank you.
Uh, can you see the slides? The presentation is visible? Yes, sir. OK. So uh, very good afternoon to everyone who is uh, who are actually joining today for this webinar. This and for the international affairs of Daffodil International University as an assistant director. And my today's topic is digitalization for institutional sustainability from the point of view of Bangladesh as well as from Daffodil International University. So to introduce my university, I'd like to share a few information that Daffodil International University is one of the top ranked private university in Bangladesh established in 2002. With uh, now currently we have around 23,000 students uh, from many different countries as well as from local students. We have around 520 international students uh, from Asia, Africa and all around the world. And the university is globally connected with more than 385 international institutions. And of course, Philippines is one of our uh, very, uh, very active partner country where actually many colleges and universities are partner. And very soon we hope that your college is also going to be a partner of Daffodil International University. So my uh, presentation is focusing on how this Daffodil International University started its journey and how we are actually, we were ready for the situation and what digital practices we had from the very beginning. So as a first step, I would like to mention that since 2010, we started one project for our students' development. It's called the One Student, One Laptop. And with this initiative, DIU distributed around 40,000 free laptops for each and every students under the, under the title One Student, One Laptop. And it was actually the first time in Bangladesh that we initiated. And following our initiative, some other colleges and universities, they started this initiative to make the students more competent to be fit for this digital era. So I would like to introduce a bit more about our university, the Daffodil International University is, is a part of a big uh, family. It's called Daffodil Family. We have school, college, university, and some other uh, institutions. We have also IT infrastructure. We have some IT companies. So since the organization, Daffodil Family, was focusing on ICT, our university was also one of the initiative that uh, we were connected with other sister concerns, those who are IT focused. So, with one of our organization named GoEDU, and also another one is Skill Jobs, we try to support our students to connect it with academically for online courses, as well as to fit for the job market, connecting them with the job field so that we can search the job markets in, uh, in online platform using these Skill Jobs. What are the digital common practices we have set up in our university? If I talk about you see that some of the examples I have presented here, that uh, from the very beginning of one student, don't, when he or she will be admitted to the university, he can actually go forward with all kinds of these uh, sort of uh, features inside the university, like online registration, application, result, evaluation, uh, even the employees, though they can actually get the salary and disbursement fully from home fully from online and we have the online profile for each and every students as well as the profiles of the employees we have different it requisitions and services for the students and also the family members of this university so also the payment you see that we have one card solution so everything was actually connected digitally for the sustainability of the university it is not only the academic sustainability as well as it is actually the sustainability of the university how they can support the students more digitally it's about the service. So to connect the students and uh, everyone with the social media platform that we use normally, Facebook, Twitter, and others, those who are actually quite informal platform, but we connected our students formally with our own Daffodil Forum as well as the blog. So through this platform, we actually connected our students to make them more resourceful, as well as we trained them, we connected them within our network and also in local platform with Campus TV and also Campus Radio. So the students can actually enjoy and practice the best uh, areas of this digitalization. 
Moving into the academic part, we also established the education ERP for our own software uh, by the Daffodil Software Limited. And through this software, what we actually did that our education services, the, all the classes, the materials were actually connected with this education ERP, as well as the, our DIU library is actually fully equipped with e-library facilities. So the students in this pandemic, they can also be connected and they can get the resources from their home. And to make this all the digital practices more secure, we have the cybersecurity center. So it is actually our own cybersecurity center that is actually uh, empowering and that is actually securing this uh, whole idea. And also the cybersecurity center is actually supporting the governmental body as well for national security system of these universities. So what other best practices we have implemented inside the university like we have the DIU's digital uh, strategic priority. So digitalization was one of the core idea, one of the core pillar for the university. So we keep it in mind that if we need to sustain in the market for, for the students, we need to be digitally focused. As well as you see that we have a very active social media page in Facebook where we have 2.8 million followers. So for all the promotional strategy was connected digitally, not only in the local media, but also in social media. So suddenly we see that we have experienced the COVID-19 at the beginning of this year, 2020. So the whole world was facing uh, COVID-19 as a pandemic. It's like intermission, like we have seen in the movies, that like intermission, suddenly everything has changed. So what major threats we have felt uh, in this education system in Bangladesh after March 25, because from March 25, we had actually kind of lockdown and the institutions and everything was closed. Mostly people started doing it from home and some business were fully closed. So as a result of this lockdown and this COVID-19, over 1.3 million higher secondary school candidates were unable to sit for their national board exam due to pandemic and lockdown. And what actually the effect we felt as a university that we don't have new students as since there was no HSC candidates, there was no exam. So we had very limited students to admit in the university. So the universities, we have more than 156 universities in Bangladesh. So we felt the crisis of these new students. The another threat was that many students, they, they stayed, they live in the, uh, rural areas in the country. So they had a problem of high speed internet also the including the cost. So considering all this situation, we felt that we have to be fit. We have to encourage this more digitalization in the university system. So what we have done, we have made the smart edu, we have developed it inside the university, our all the system, all the work plan, all the educational materials, everything was connected through this smart edu system. Since the pandemic has started, we developed this smart edu. And we also developed a partnership with Coursera so that our students, teachers, and everyone can actually learn and practice this online courses from this platform. And finally, the most important thing is that we have established Blended Learning Center BLC through our all the academic academicians of the university. So what we have done, let me explain you a bit. So through this blended learning center, all our courses, all the exams, quizzes, assignment, presentation, attendance, everything, even the students' discussion, everything was done in one platform. So the, every morning the students will come and join these all activities. So and teachers, they can actually track the students' activity. The students can join in forum participation. The students can discuss with each other, sharing the ideas. And of course, each other, the students can also uh, evaluate the teachers and teachers also can evaluate the students. And it's actually, we have 100% uh, participation from both end. So as we practice this digitalization, what are the impacts we have uh, received, the positive impact that we, the university, the other universities in the country, they had less, they have more uh, effect impact uh, of this COVID-19, they, they were missing many students, but we had uh, so far, we, we had not, not that much problem. So you see the number of students we had in spring and the next semester due to COVID-19 different financial difficulties, we had drop of some students, but the next semester we, we could actually improve the number of students with all our these facilities. 
and also the number of uh, degrees seeking new students also increased although the country has no um, hsc exam but we were getting the new students and uh, i would like to share some more data that uh, the students they mostly pay the tuition fee and all other payment on campus but since we have digital and other online payment systems the number of payment online was increased There's some data about um, the courses in spring we had around 600 courses uh, online that was developed by our academicians and in our platform and since the blc platform was uh, developed by us the all the more courses all the teachers they upload the all the academic courses in this new platform gradually so what initiatives we have done for our students you, you, as i mentioned before that uh, there was a uh, cost of internet was quite high for some students to bear in this pandemic so we did some agreement with the mobile companies we give them low cost internet packets for our students we developed psychological support center uh, online so that these students can get it because during pandemic many of them feel uh, psychological problems because they're staying at home they have some frustration and others so we we give them this online psychological support we give them waiver and installment support so the students those who are going to admit those who have financial difficulty they can enjoy this waiver facility and of course those who are going to graduate in this situation they can have their own employability skill test so we develop online employability skill test and as a result of all these activities we also added some other initiative in our own university system since people cannot come up regularly to campus we develop e-ticket services so that they can get campus services pre-booking based and also we discuss, we develop online discuss modules so that all the platform uh, are you know scattered but the students teachers and everyone can discuss in one platform to track it uh, correctly as well as job reporting for the employees we also invested a good number of financial uh, budget from the university for this uh, it resources of the university for this digitalization since uh, since i'm working for the internationalization of the university i would like to focus on the internationalization virtually because now due to covid-19 all the students are unable to travel globally also it is impossible kind of like to receive the students on campus so we focused on the international partnership on virtual mobility so we hosted regularly e talks webinars also, as well as we introduced coil project uh, before the covid-19 we are not that much focused on coil project but we developed coil projects uh, like collaborative online international learning so we connected international teachers also our teachers with this coil, coil projects we did online global classroom our students were connected with different partner universities as well as we did some mega events like uh, COVID-19 uh, Coronathon project. Uh, also, we did international social business summer program, where of course uh, so we have different international partners, and we also did some other programs that I will also go forward and I will show you later. So, what are the things that we have done? in terms of student mobility. So last year, if I see that uh, in 2019, we have around 340 student mobility from our international affairs office. But due to pandemic, we couldn't do any physical mobility, but we uh, we have converted it to, to virtual mobility and we have already around 307 students. They did virtual mobility projects with different partner universities. And of course here I have uh, gave some examples that our students participated at different online competitions, uh, students forum, summer and school program competitions, and as well as uh, on campus cross-cultural program like summer fest. And there are many international students from our university, those who actually left the country just before the pandemic for their home country, but they couldn't receive their, uh, because we organized farewell program on campus for the international students. So we couldn't do it this year, but when the pandemic was a bit better here, we hosted a virtual farewell ceremony for the students. So our students, they developed some robot and we have on campus robots. So through this, we actually connected the international students to have the feeling that they are not actually their home country. They are not missing the campus, but they can get these facilities on campus using this technology, using this digitalization practice. So what are the impacts we have experienced through this digitalization? so since we have some good practices of digitalization and other universities are also following we can see that 
we have the sustainability of the university if we have this digitalization practice some cases it is also cost effective and flexibility in communication we are also minimizing the risk and also we can save the time we have shareable resource like at this moment maybe other time we cannot share many of our resource with our partners but of course during these digital practices we can share our resources we can also get learn each other and of course we get the confidence from the students we have student enrollment and engagement uh, is getting better day by day and it's of course having the impact on uninterrupted education our students are not going to stop but that continuing the education the employers are satisfied that yes we do have uh, a good uh, background for our students also for the university and we can continue internationalization uh, virtually at this moment and through these all practices as a result we can actually achieve sdgs more and more day by day so we can actually have a sustainable education system and uh, i would like to mention one more point that we are not only doing this for our university we are also trying to support the local schools and colleges with our own system this uh, virtual uh, platform for the school management solution and as well as for the colleges as college management solutions for the schools and colleges of the country and of course at the end i would like to mention that uh, the digitalization is actually a power for everyone to cope up the situation cope up this new normal we have to accept it and we have to fight with the situation with this all digital practices that we are also doing also we will learn from each other and that's all from myself and thank you very much for joining and i would like to listen from the audience and also from the board and of course from dr pinar and thank you very much that's all from my presentation thank you for that informative presentation mr sayed to those students who have questions about the topic you can send your questions in the comment section mr sayed will address them later in the q and a part of our program thank you sir now we're going to proceed with the next talk. I would like to call my co-moderator, Professor Rosel Gutierrez, to formally introduce our second speaker. Thank you, Professor Ocampo. It is my pleasure to introduce our second speaker for today. Our speaker is an experienced administrator in higher education with over 12 years experience specializing in Erasmus Plus, EU programs, international projects, intercultural communication, event planning, international event conference organization, international student recruitment, student counseling, institutional partnerships, mobility programs, international academic relations, international marketing, NGO management, short-term and certificate programs, campus-wide internationalization and internationalization of higher education. She is also a business development professional with a PhD focused in international relations and Master of Science in Management from Huelva University, Spain. She tries to combine her experience with giving trainings from, to Turkish and regional universities, international office teams, and sharing her op-eds regarding Erasmus and different topics on Binyaprak platform, digital and inspiring social networks. She is currently working as Erasmus Plus Institutional Coordinator at Istanbul Aydin University, Turkey, and General Coordinator at URAS Eurasian Universities Union and URI Eurasia Higher Education Summit. She is also a working group member for Erasmus Plus Higher Education of Turkish National Agency and Recognition Group member. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Dr. Pinar Elbasan. Good Hi, Pinar. Good morning there in Istanbul. Yeah, good morning from Istanbul. Good afternoon to Philippines. Thank you for the introduction. I'm pr okay. very pleased to have with, with you today. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Thank you so much for inviting me as speaker. Um, you may start your presentation, doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Let me share my screen.
Is it visible, my presentation? Yes, doctor. Perfect. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to also welcome uh, audio audience respectfully and distinguished vice president, academicians, dear students. I'm Pinar Elbasan. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'll be also talking about digitalization, but also internationalization best practices of Istanbul I University, as well as I will be also sharing some impacts of COVID-19 in Turkish higher education system. Um, maybe some of our uh, participants uh, is not familiar with Turkish higher education, so let me start with Turkish higher education facts and figures firstly. Uh, Turkey is one of the biggest higher education systems in the world and the largest one in European higher education area. We have around in 80 million students total in uh, around 200 universities. Uh, most of them, uh, 130 of them are public and the rest of them are foundation universities, which are non-profit universities. In Turkey, there is no private university. And uh, there are also around 176,000 academic staff in all Turkish universities. And Turkish universities offer around 60,000 academic programs. Let me also give information about Istanbul ID University, which is the largest foundation university of Turkey. Uh, although it's a young university, but the, the university's roots are going back to uh, a very huge ac educational sector provider of Turkey. And we have around 40,000 students and six, 63 alumni, thousand alumni we have. And we have more than 5,000 international students so there's a very international environment waiting for uh, our uh, local international and exchange students. We have uh, around 2,200 both academic and administrative staff. We have uh, 13 campuses or around Istanbul. The main campus is based in the very center of Istanbul. So we would love to also see students from Philippines, staff from San Dominic. And we have uh, more than 450 international and Erasmus Plus partners. And we would also like to see uh, your institution among our partners network. And we have one institute of graduate studies where we offer master and PhD programs both in English or in other languages. We have 12 faculties, including also health sciences, medical faculty, dentistry faculty. And we also have one, uh, our university hospital, dentist hospital, and many clinics uh, in Istanbul. We have one school of foreign languages, one school of applied sciences, three vocational schools, where we also offer two years associate degree programs. We also offer many programs in health uh, related uh, areas. We also have 34 research and policy centers, uh, where our lifelong learning center as well as online learning center uh, are. Uh, international affiliations, uh, Islam University is the founding member of Eurasian Universities Union, also board member of Mediterranean University Union, but also part of many national and international organizations. And, uh, Islam University has attracted a large of international students in the last decade and became the export leader in higher education and has uh, been awarded by Ministry of Trade in Turkey. And Istanbul Aydin University has recently also qualified for the True Quality Program of the Ministry of Trade, which goal is to facilitate and support the success of Turkish brands in the international arena. So we, our university is also ranked by uh, Times and QS, also ranked by local uh, ranking institutions. As I mentioned, we have more than 5,000 students from 114 countries. And uh, from 74 four different countries, we have uh, also uh, partners. And we also offer many exchange programs to our uh, students. Mevlana is a state-funded international program, so Turkish universities are also able to send their students through a, a, a national uh, funding program uh, called Mevlana. Uh, Erasmus Plus Turkey is a program country, so Turkish universities are able to also send uh, students to European and uh, world international uh, international universities under EU funding for studies, also for internship. But we are also able to fund non-European countries uh, universities to come and study uh, in a Turkish university, or staff uh, in, are also able to come and uh, teach or 
visit Turkish universities for their training activities. We also offer study abroad programs with non-Erasmus uh, partners, so uh, partner universities are able to send uh, and uh, their students and staff for study abroad programs. Also, we offer short-term programs uh, where we will be also sharing the details later. So we, uh, COVID-19, of course, has its own risk, but also has offered many opportunities. So uh, transnational uh, education is also one of them. So it's, it also become popular again. And we also established a new partnership with University of Arizona. Uh, they uh, established their global camp campus in Turkey, a blended model of online Arizona programs and Istanbul University campus experience. So students in, in Turkey who have been admitted to the University of Arizona can safely stay in Turkey and benefit from the campus facilities of our university and start their studies toward their U.S. degree with the online courses of University of Arizona during the COVID-19 pandemic. So it's also a huge opportunity for uh, all universities that, so they can uh, even they cannot send or receive students uh, from abroad, they are able to also establish these kind of initiatives in other countries. So we also part of many international Erasmus Plus projects, and we will be glad to also part and support other organizations' uh, capacity building projects. And uh, I'll be also sharing these kind of global Connex seminars. Due to COVID-19, we weren't able to, you know, uh, go abroad and attend in any training activity in our partner universities, or we weren't able to also uh, attend in international conferences that we normally uh, go every year for uh, international activities. But we uh, also many partner university representatives. So we uh, arranged Global Connect seminars where we hosted distinguished academicians from all around the world, where they share their best practices or opinions on uh, either online teaching and learning or other intercultural communication courses we also arrange with partner universities. We also uh, offered for the first time this year an online short-term program. Uh, our summer school program is Lightful Istanbul, uh, we, where we offered this time for the first time uh, online. So uh, we hosted more than 600 students from 45 countries since 2014. It's a two weeks intensive pro uh, program where we also offer, provide ECTS, a European credit uh, for this course. So we also normally uh, organize many sightseeing tours, but this year we uh, organize it virtual uh, tours for the participant students. And some are, uh, this online school uh, is organized in collaboration with EURAS, Eurasian University Union, for the first time, and we offered many programs. We also also offered international university students during this two weeks online program. So this fall semester, we also uh, offered this initiative virtual exchange program to our partner universities. So students are able were able to attend in uh, in one online course, and we offered to our partner universities. So we offered them a credit. And we will be also uh, organizing closing ceremonies. Uh, intercultural learning certificate program will also uh, arrange for participant students. So two students from each partner university uh, were able to choose one online course from our online course package. Students uh, were able to join uh, this program and they, they will be having this course till the uh, end of this semester. And if students satisfactorily completed online exams, assignments, and subjects to the regulations of credit transfer, so they will be able to receive a certificate as well as a transcript uh, from our university. So um, let me also start the second part of my presentation, digitalization best practices of Istanbul ID University. Since the beginning of Istanbul ID University, uh, digitalization is, is, is a priority of our university. So we created a, a system, a student information, student and academician staff information system called UBIS. And we also have our own, own mobile app. Uh, and uh, I'll be also sharing, uh, let me uh, show our UBIS. Um, so through UBIS system, students are able to access all the information regarding their courses. 
uh, they are able to see their uh, transcript, their courses, their homeworks, course notes, attendance timetable, uh, and uh, anything they would like to also ask their professors. And due to COVID-19, we also integrated many tools into this UBIS platform. Uh, one of them is, is the, the course online course, a platform access, as well as uh, their uh, final and makeup or midterm exam schedule they're able to see. Uh, they can fill out many surveys through the system and they're able to also access information about university academic calendar, registration info, uh, internship uh, information, and any other information they need or uh, we are also announcing all uh, information through the system. So students are, are able to access the system to, with their uh, student number and the, and the password that they are uh, provided right after their registration. So if they would like to access the live lesson, uh, we have online classroom so they can uh, only access the system and then they, they will click on the UB system and they are able to start their online uh, course. Same for the staff, the staff is also able to access the system. Of course, the, the interface is, is much different comparing to students, but we are also able to access all information, all notifications, announcements uh, from the rectorate. So as I mentioned, smart screens, normal, the campus is now open to students, but with a reduced number of students. Uh, students uh, are able to use these smart screens with their uh, student cards. So with this system, they, students are able to reach every information they need. Entrance and exit information, exam programs, timetable, general mail information, NIST class, payment, changing password, anything they might need. Uh, there's an online support uh, screens uh, everywhere uh, in, in the campus. So let me come back uh, to our best practices in digitalization. Um, we also, I mean, normally through this UB system, we, uh, we were able to, together with academicians, we were able to support. But due to COVID-19, we, uh, you know, improved our online support services where we also have an online help desk, help desk so students are able to ask any questions regarding their courses or anything they might need also from student affairs so they they can just reach call centers or this help desk so where they are able to connect with their academician or with their departments so uh, online sources we also have e-library so students are able to access e-library with their uh, student uh, ID. Uh, so they are able to access uh, thousands of uh, resources, not from uh, local, but also international press. Uh, there's an online career platform also uh, established by our career center. So students are able to also uh, prepare their uh, European format uh, CVs, as well as they, can, they are able to connect with industry leaders. Uh, EBYS is, is our electronic system where we also, uh, you know, send all our letters electronically, not inside uh, internally, but also we can uh, we are able to send any uh, letters uh, within a Turkish uh, community. INET is is also a tool that is also uh, established by our IT department. So through this INET system, staff are able to. Uh, ask for any type of uh, digital support or IT support or any type they any uh, you know uh, thing they might even ask from the purchasing department they are able to uh, submit their uh, uh, you know uh, thing from this INET system. So online courses platform that I all uh, I just uh, shared the screen. So students and staff are able to. Uh, access this online courses platform. This year, due to COVID-19, we uh, use Adobe Connect. So Adobe Connect is, is integrated with our UB system. So uh, uh, academicians are, as well as staff are able to access online classroom through our system. And uh, ECTS online package, we have, we have created uh, our own website where any students, including exchange and Erasmus students, 
or partner universities are able to access all the courses where the learning outcomes, uh, course syllabus, as well as uh, curricula, everything is uploaded on this website. And it's uh, actually, uh, you know, due to COVID-19, we improved the system. So any information that they would like to take a course from any department, so there's our exchange students are able to access the website and they can see the courses that they would like to take from the department. And uh, under International Relations Office, we have several offices. So a recruitment office ha has been using online application system since the beginning. We have our uh, own homemade uh, online application. So students uh, are able to also, also agents are able to check their uh, students uh, statue actually so online registration system has been in integrated due to covid 19 because due to lockdown or some measures set by the government or some ministries so students are not able to come uh, to the campus for their registration but they were able to uh, finalize their registration through our system so let me uh, continue now So what makes Istanbul Aydın University unique during COVID-19? So uh, as I mentioned, online registration and payment system. So we also provide many, also we have faced many tuition fee problems. So we also provided many special discounts for new international or local students enrolling at Istanbul Aydın University. Uh, we also organize many online seminars, conferences on various teams with free access for our students. Full support from the departments, academic departments, as well as upper management. Uh, distant learning solutions up to date on courses a platform we also provide uh, to all of our students. Sanitary and safety measures inside the campus and information campaigns were also distributed to all students and staff. Instant feedbacks given to the students through official system, UBIS, as well as mobile app. And, and we, we started attending in online fairs and events to also promote future students. We arranged many also uh, webinars for uh, future prospective students. And what is the, what makes uh, Istanbul University Erasmus office? Because we uh, during the COVID-19, our uh, Erasmus incoming or outgoing students were outside. So we offered them a 24-7 full support. Uh, from our team uh, in managing the COVID-19 crisis, providing frequently asked question guides and arranging WhatsApp groups. Uh, we also provided psychological support to our exchange students, uh, online events uh, with free access uh, for Erasmus students, support services, informative mailings, assistance with online mobile, mobility doc documents. And we also, you know, Erasmus Plus is a funding program, so students, uh, received a funding, a grant from uh, our university or they, from their universities. So we, uh, we helped them with the Erasmus Plus uh, refunds on financial damages caused by uh, COVID-19 and mobility postponement rights. Uh, and we also provided many assistance support with online course registration for students canceling their mobility. So what we are doing for this academic year, Samla University with, it will conduct teaching and learning in the form of blended and hybrid model uh, will be applied for this fall semester. We we are we don't know what uh, this world bring to us and what the second semester will be conducted. But this uh, academic year has already started in our university, and we will be uh, implementing a hybrid education. Not only students are able to come to the uh, uh, campus. So students need to uh, reserve the courses through our UB system. And, uh, and the system is not giving right to every student to come to the campus. If a student comes a cam uh, to the campus, uh, for example, this week, next week, the system uh, is automatically not giving a chance to, uh, you know, uh, for the reservation. So it's automatically passing to other students. So the com uh, common compulsory, uh, compulsory courses will be online. Fully theoretical courses, which do not require lab or workshop practice, will start online too. 
The execution methods can be re-evaluated according to the progress of the pandemic, of course. Full theoretical courses which need the numerical problem solving and using of a whiteboard or visual material will be uh, conducted both online and face-to-face -face in reduced class capacity, as I mentioned before. Uh, courses in the form of, of workshop or lab practice will be realized face-to-face -face by taking ne necessary measures and in reduced class capacity. And students who cannot attend to face-to-face -to -face courses in reduced class capacity will be able to follow their lessons remotely. That's why uh, cameras uh, were also integrated in the system. So if uh, students have, have a first major reason to not to come to the campus, they, they are able to also watch uh, the courses online together with their uh, mates. So let me uh, also give information about the health sciences programs because uh, most of our uh, audience uh, is coming from uh, health-related uh, area. So um, clinical training, uh, internship, and work placements, it's also very important for uh, medical or dentistry or any uh, program uh, student. Internship within the university or outside the university will be carried out in accordance with the permissions obtained uh, from the workplaces. So if a student are, is not able to come to Istanbul, to the campus, or is not, is not able to come to Turkey even, they're able to, uh, you know, carry out this internship or practice, uh, you know, in any university or in any hospital that is based in their country or in their cities. And, um, if it's not allowed, the internship and placements will, will be postponed, postponed to the spring semester. The theoretical parts of clinic training, internship and work placements in the field of health studies will be held online simultaneously in the fall semester. And the internship and clinical practice trainings will be held face to face in the fall semester according to the conditions determined by the relevant authorities. If clini clinical trainings cannot be carried out, they will be also able to postponed to the spring semester. And what else with the other uh, departments? Uh, art and design disciplines, for example, drawing and painting courses that require a workshop environment or architectural and industrial design courses based on uh, project correction and courses that require the use of special equipment or computer design labs will be held face-to-face -face in reduced class capacity and by taking turns, of course. And, uh, and formal education will be also held at the weekends because not all the, of course, courses uh, will be fully uh, conducted online during the week due to huge uh, interest and uh, participation. Uh, also, registration rene renewables and course reg registrations uh, are realized completely in digital environments and epidemic measures are also implemented in the library so and our library is also open uh, between 10 and uh, you know till 10 o'clock for seven days so students are able to uh, you know if they are able to come to campus they can also benefit from library uh, in, in the campus and and we we are not sure about the you know uh, exams how the exams will be conducted and th this will be decided according to the uh, pandemic actually uh, we, we are we are not sure about the evolution. So, what about the impact of COVID-19 in, in Turkish universities? Turkish Higher Education Council has been closely monitoring the novel COVID-19 outbreak from the day the first case was reported in Turkey around March. Three of the biggest uh, Turkish universities, which already had open and distance education facilities, were able to uh, move to toward online education for all their students uh, more easily. As a result. Some of other universities have distant uh, education centers, and these centers helped significantly to build successful sources to move courses online. And Council of Higher Education has built an open source database by collecting all open and distance education materials from university because some of the universities that are established in other parts of, uh, especially eastern part of uh, Turkey, uh, wasn't able to establish this distance education platform easily so uh, kohe uh, has shared their uh, sources and uh, also they decided to conduct final examination examinations during the spring semester 
So, uh, and COE also published a new normalization guide in global pandemic by examining the practices in the world. This guide include also framework decisions, distance education practice recommendations, international students meetings, conference and exchange programs. For example, last semester, all the international mobility programs were suspended, but now it's open. Either students are not able to go abroad if the borders are closed, students are able to also uh, benefit from virtual mobility uh, programs. And Turkish universities are allowed to carry out different practices in line with different regional and local levels of COVID-19 pandemic. And this will also uh, will be carried out in line uh, with the guidance provided by Ministry of Health and other relevant uh, ministries. And uh, of course, the safety of our students and staff is, is in the most important thing and priority for Turkish universities. So we uh, provided many measures uh, to protect academic and administrative staff and students from the pandemic. The relevant board of universities have authority in pandemic related practices. So every Turkish university have its own committee to fight against COVID-19. And uh, we also received a recommendation from COHE regarding uh, the capacity of the classrooms. So one person for, uh, per four square, uh, meter square in the classroom should be arranged by each Turkish university. And it's necessary to maintain a distance of at least one meter uh, between uh, people in the seating arrangement. So um, I believe the, the problems faced uh, in you know Asian uh, and European universities, which have a very important place in the Eurasian higher education ecosystem, especially during this period. So their solutions, suggestion, good practice examples are very imp uh, important and extremely beneficial for our partners. Also, uh, I hope this uh, this webinar. Uh, the best practices we share, uh, we have developed uh, other universities and industries uh, against COVID-19. And special uh, studies, good practice examples developed within the framework, framework work of digitalization and internationalization. And how uh, we have, you know, uh, change strategies of COVID-19 in the next period. It will shed light on how we should follow uh the the map uh, so as euras and istanbul Aydin university we will continue our intense work with our members with our partners stakeholders all around the world without slowing down since the first day of uh, pandemic and as uh, as general coordinator of euras uh, as euras is one of the most effective and extensive educational networks in the world that keeps the pulse of higher education I also invite uh, San Dominic colleagues uh, to take an active part in this network to share our projects with us and to overcome these difficulties together with the common strategy synergy that we will create. Um, so um, I would like to thank all the organization uh, committee and I would like to invite them for collaborative projects on student mobility, virtual exchange, online staff mobility, online course, uh, development as well as other projects, uh, initiatives that will be arranged by these uh, three universities, Daffodil International University also. And uh, of course, we, we face many problems during COVID-19 and COVID-19 has forced all of us to reimagine how we deliver an engaging and holistic learning experience for students. Uh, so I hope uh, this academic year will bring us more positive and non-corona days and i uh, wish all the students a very successful academic year so on behalf of istanbul Aydin university and eurasia universities i would like to thank uh, my colleagues the organization committee and also inviting me as speaker and i would love to have some questions from the audience thank you so much Thank you for that informative presentation, Dr. Elbasan. Uh, we will now start the question and answer part of our program. If you have questions for our participants, if you have questions, you can still send it in the comment section. Um, Professor Ocampo, you can read the first question. Okay. So we have the first question. It is from Janina Dino. It is for Mr. Sayed. Does the DIUE library offer references to students who are doing their thesis studies? 
Thank you, Janina, for your question. So for our students, uh, for undergraduate and master's students, uh, even the those who are doing internship, they can actually get the resources. And uh, for the partners, those who would like to do some uh, partnership, uh, like library sharing with our library, they can also get the access, the university or colleges, they can also get the resources from our uh, e-library, yeah, as a reference. Okay. Okay. So does your e-library doc, it's like an application online? Yes. Uh, in a portal, we are actually connecting all the resources online uh, so that the students, even the partner universities, those who will make establish some partnership uh, in terms of uh, resource sharing from the library, they can do it, of course. Wow. Oh, Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much for that information. Um, let's have the second question from Ms. Eileen Cespon Olantigue. Uh, uh, let's have Dr. Pinar to answer this question. Good afternoon. In your point of view, uh, what are the latest effects of COVID-19 on digitalization and sustainability? Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, actually, we as we shared our best practices, I think the, there is a positive side on digitalization, and not COVID nineteen always or you know presents its negative effects, but also there are, are <laughs> many positive effects. Uh, so digitalization uh, is uh, has become a very important uh, aspect for all universities, and it becomes also their priority. So all the universities, <laughs> not only in Turkey, but in Bangladesh, also in Philippines, also in any, all around the world. So they started improving their uh, infrastructure. Uh, they also, you know, invested in digital systems, platforms, and they also started more, uh, you know, become a very uh, digital uh, campus or digital facilities. Even, mm -hmm. you know, there's an also positive effect. Um, on academicians because you know of course not all the academicians were technology friendly uh, users so it helped academicians also to improve their cells to improve mm -hmm. you know their professional uh, backgrounds and uh, it helps them to uh, you know also to improve their uh, foreign language uh, capacity because you know not all the academicians were able to use the systems easily so it helped also academicians to improve their selves and to help them use the technology friendly uh, apps. And I think these are the positive effects uh, of COVID-19 uh, on digitalization. Yes, indeed, there are also positive effects of COVID-19. And I think it makes us um, connect even better um, than before. Um, Ma'am Ocampo, can you um, read the next question? Okay. So we have the third question. She is from um, pharmacy, I think. Her name is Angeline Cypress. For Mr. Sayed, good day, sir. I would like to ask, how is Daffodil International University adopting in digitalizing the practical laboratory experiment in the science program? Okay, so that is also a very good question. So I'd like to mention that uh, for the laboratory, not only like a pharmacy, but also like some other courses like architecture and some other courses all actually became uh, sometimes like students how they will learn that is actually the question the practical aspects so what we did we actually uh, supported uh, from the library like the teachers they sometimes they become they do make some you know like live classes from the laboratory and also some courses we actually dropped for this semester like those laboratory courses or the credits they will be actually done maybe next year maybe when the situation will be a bit over so they are doing the uh, the academic part but the laboratory or the experimental part they will do it actually later so we actually divided it as per the department's uh, need like some departments they can actually do these laboratory works when the situation will be updated or maybe they can also do it the teachers will be showing them from the laboratory so in, in some cases it is kind of hybrid so the camp uh, the teachers they do come to the lab, lab, uh, laboratory and they do show it from the laboratory of the campus yeah, so it um, that's the same practice we are um, doing here in St. Dominic. So we conduct virtual laboratories, which we show how the experiment um, is done um, in face-to-face -face and then actually send them videos 
for their um, use. So exactly. thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Um, we have another question from uh, Professor Ronald Tomines uh, for Dr. Pinar. Um, how can we ensure data privacy in digitalization technology? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, cybersecurity is also very important, becomes more important than uh, the, you know, pre-COVID world. Uh, so data data privacy and uh, cyber security uh, i think becomes also crucial for universities because we are under european union's regulations so uh, universities under european union uh, needs to protect their data and uh, we have we've been using european regulations uh, for for a couple of years so uh, so the, all the data is protected by a uh, university management as well as IT systems. But under our university, we also have cyber security system and IT departments. And we, we've been using uh, these uh, measures uh, because our government has also set a, 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 you know, a measures for all universities as well as companies. Yes. So uh, even any university break this uh, privacy, they they are pub punished actually. So we are, we are we are very careful on on this actually. But uh, regarding the cyber security issues, the uh, there there is this sector is also very advanced in Turkey. Uh, mm -hmm. So there are many uh, companies, uh, you know, where we uh, collaborate with US or European uh company leaders so if, if the university aren't uh, able to use their homemade systems so they are able to use outsource uh these facilities and it's very important yes indeed and also uh, of course in saint dominic college of asia it is also one of our um uh, priority to ensure that um, the, the, the data of our students are in, of course, have uh, privacy. Okay, um, can we have okay. another question? Okay, for the next question is for again, Mr. Sayed. This is from Camille Irish Simbulan. If there is a problem with the system of the platforms that you are going to use, what um, do you think to fix it without? causing um, problems to their studies or the students' studies. Okay, so thank you, Camilia, for the question. So uh, for our cases, what actually we have done that we have our own system from the very beginning, uh, from many years that we are using. So we actually never changed it a uh, lot but what we did, we just converted it to the new system. Like previously, we did the Google Classroom and all other uh, stuff we used in our academic uh, practices. But when we change it, we just uh, introduce it to a small departments, like maybe the departments, those who have maybe 50 to 60 students, maybe, I mean the batch, like one batch or something. And then we find out the problems, like we did the SWOT analysis and the problems we found, and then we actually spread it to the whole university so that before going it to the mass uh, people, we can short out the problems. And then uh, this is the way we actually introduce the new uh, features. And uh, from our part, the students and teachers and everyone were actually very much positive about the new technology and practices. So when we introduce them, the, all the features, we had our own uh, central feedback and suggestion uh, center where actually all the teachers, the students, and everyone can actually give the feedback. We can solve it anytime. So we had, uh, you can say we have 24 hours uh, team, those who can uh, solve these all technological problems for the, because when you practice the new technologies, of course, they will have difficulties. Like if we just uh, move from one cell phone to another cell phone, we even face the problems of uh, matching with our own fingers. So that is what we are doing that uh, we need to cope up. That is what we are doing. Yes, that's actually true. From it varies from device to device, um, device to device, and actually, um, not all students or not all of the users are actually be able to um, navigate it a um, hundred percent on the first try. Right. So yes. 
Um, Next question, yeah. Mom Rafa. Yes, uh, we have another question from another professor at St. Dominic College of Asia, Ma'am Luz Biminda Corpus for Dr. Pinar and Dr. Syed. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, her question is, I can't see her question. Um, uh, how do you ensure authentic assessment and evaluation of students learning during the online courses? Okay, so should I start or uh, Dr. Pinner, would you like to say? Yeah. I mean, let me uh, sh uh, share what we are doing uh, under Istanbul University. Uh, of course, uh, during the pandemic, it, which was our first experience, so of course, uh, assessment and evaluation uh, systems were also changed. But it was also the first experience for academicians in, in, in our university, also in Turkey. So uh, at the beginning, we moved, of course, all the courses to online very fast so it wasn't like a distance education you know but it, it's just a um, temporary solution for universities so uh, you know we just adapted the system according to the changes because uh, today's system were, uh, will be changed automatically tomorrow due to the evolution of pandemic so uh, you know and we've been uh, we had to also uh, implement all the measures coming from the Council of Higher Education. So uh, we basically, uh, you know, follow all the measures uh, come from uh, the uh, local authorities, uh, national governments, uh, but evaluation and assessment systems uh, have been changed because, uh, you know, normally the syllabus is, is, is arranged according to a normal live experience. So since students are not able to attend all the courses due to different time zones or, you know, some, you know, some students uh, stays in rural zones of uh, Turkey, so they don't have full access to the system sometimes. So they, uh, they are not able to uh, follow the courses. And so they, they had to watch or follow the course asynchronously. So they, they weren't able to, uh, you know, attend all the courses uh, all the time. So that's why uh, our professors uh, has established different methods for assessment and evaluation. So uh, we also started offering more quizzes, more uh, projects, and students uh, had to you know, work together with their uh, friends, and they had to present it to, during the classes, so uh, professor started giving extra uh, points uh, for for these projects. So I think uh, it may, it helped, uh, COVID-19 helps uh, academicians uh, to integrate more students in the, in the classroom because some professors were using traditional methods. So it helped them to uh, offer new methods uh, and integrated new tools. And uh, students were, are able, you know, also learn different uh, you know, platform. So they had to use, for example, some websites to, you know, to make some videos, animations. So, uh, and gam some gamification methods were also integrated in the systems. So now uh, the evaluation and assessment has been uh, developed where we see more projects, more presentations, uh, you know, more student support contribution i mean uh, in the in the system thank you very much for sharing that dr pinar i think uh, we will have the last question from clementina jason Jisinska, I, I, I hope I could uh, pronounce your name um, correctly. Um, and the question is to all presenters, what success have you had with online psychological help to students? What percentage of the students have sought help in this form? Okay, so maybe I can start with my one. Uh, 
so we had uh, our uh, previously we had our team psychological team from the student affairs office so the psychological team actually like i in my presentation i have shown that we have established the e ticket system for the services so what we have done the process is like uh, the each course teacher they have their own students from under their courses so if they find any students those who have some you know like psychological issues that need to solve so the batch advisor the course teacher actually inform the batch advisor and then advisor connect with the student affairs team or the psychological center and we actually support the students we bring them to the psychological team we see how actually they are affected what are the solutions and many students actually um, during this pandemic they actually uh, get the support from the psychological support center as well as uh, we hold uh, some webinars and workshops and programs for the parents as well as for the students uh, by connecting different uh, experts from national level as well as from the international level so that uh, they can learn and they can do practice and they can support to the students so about the percentage for the students uh, it is still not yet uh, i i don't know the number uh, how much uh, students uh, actually get the support but it's quite a good number uh, from each department yeah so that's all let me, me yeah let me continue um so same actually more or less same in our university um actually i'm not sure also about the percentage uh but i um, the the best practices that i can share this uh, covid 19 pandemic help universe to connect more with the students because not of course for example in our university we have around 40000 students so we are not normally it's not it's impossible to uh, you know meet uh, with them or know uh, you know or help for each of their problem but it helped us to create a, a student friendly also system for for all of us so we uh, created uh, different uh, tools to support students so one of them is a weekly consultancy hours so, uh, you know, students are not able to find their professors because uh, it's not uh, the same with pre-COVID-19 conditions. So most of the professors are now, you know, going to one class, one online classroom to another. So they are not able to also, you know, see their students physically or even virtually. So, uh, so with the weekly consultancy hour, students are able to access the system meet with their advisor or professor and ask their academic questions to them, address their questions. Uh, same for administrative offices, for example, as international offices also, we started organizing many webinars uh, where we host also, uh, you know, university administrators, some academicians, uh, some heads of departments, as well as some partner university representatives. But also we started organizing webinars where we also answer their questions because they are not also able to find us every time. Uh, so we, we've been arranging these webinars also to have their questions, hear their uh, uh, problems and try to uh, figure it out uh, fast as soon as uh, possible. And I think these are uh, the best practices that we uh, try to manage uh, during COVID-19. Thank you, Dr. Pinar. So that, um, that last question was actually from an international viewer of our um, webinar for today. So thank you again for that question. That's actually the last question for today. Thank you for answering those, um, our dear speakers. To give his reaction to our event, may we call on the program chair of BS Physical Therapy, Professor Roland Sardan. Hello, thank you very much for the introduction, Professor Ocampo. Uh, good afternoon here in Manila and in Dhaka, and good morning in Istanbul in the uh, in Turkey. So it is my greatest honor to be your reactor for this uh, very successful international webinar about digitalization for institution, institution, institutional sustainability. 
indeed, we have seen that education really now transcends beyond borders. We have now seen the trend of uh, transnational education and the importance of uh, equipping and building our uh, adequate infrastructure for our online mobility of our students. So first, let's go to the talk of Mr. Sayed Raihan Ulasam from the prestigious, prestigious Daffodil International University. One of the key points that he mentioned is the adoption of the one student, one laptop uh, program, which I think is a good benchmark for Philippine universities or Philippine higher education institutions for us to fully equip our students with the uh, technological, technological capability to adapt to uh, the transnational education and the mob, uh, online mobilization of education. Also, Mr. Uh, Ul As Islam also advocated the use of digital platforms such as campus television, different uh, online forums and blogs, and campus radios, which I think is very important uh, for the students to be oriented or to be, to be uh, aware of everything that is happening uh, inside the campus and in their study life. He also mentioned several barriers that uh, they encountered in the university, such as availability of high internet speed, especially uh, among the students in the rural areas, which I think is also common to the students or the clientele that we are uh, encountering in the country, also here in the Philippines. We have several students who also uh, encounter uh, low bandwidth and slow internet connection. And they also, like us in the Philippines, also seen a sharp decrease in their uh, enrollment of their new students. So with this, they have came up with several solutions such as blended learning centers, which I think is a very good, uh, is a very good practice pattern. Also, they have a very strong student support and a very good innovative programs for internalization. What have we realized with the talk of uh, Mr. Ul Islam is that uh, practicing online education and also practicing online student mobilization uh, enables us to do cost-effective uh, delivery of our teaching and learning instructions and teaching, uh, teaching and learning uh, deliverables. It also enables us to reduce the risk of our students contracting uh, the, famous the famous virus now, the COVID-19 virus. Also, it enables us to foster and harness borderless education, especially ab among our uh, Asian, ASEAN, and also our European neighbors as well. And the most important that I have realized or that we realize with the talk of Mr. Ula Slam is that we can enable uh, our teaching and learning strategies or our teaching delivery to uh, satisfy and to achieve the sustainable development goals, which is very and a very important trust of any higher education institution. So now let's go into the talk of Dr. Pinar Elbasan from the Istanbul Aydan University, also an implementer of the very famous uh, international student mobilization program, the Erasmus Mundus program. Uh, everyone is very uh, hopeful to be in that program. It's a very prestigious one. So we have seen that Dr. P uh, Pinar has discussed about the extensive exchange opportunities that they have given to students, which I think we can benchmark. Uh, hopefully, we could establish international linkages, linkages with prestigious international universities for us to do an extensive exchange opportunity. Also, Dr. Pinar also discussed about transnational education. She highlighted about transnational education particularly through the example of the University of Arizona Global Campus. Hopefully in the future, the St. Dominic College of Asia, through a partner institution, could also come up with a global campus, whereas international students, Philippine students, Asian students, and European students, and all other students could come up in, in one global campus and collaborate with each other. Also, Dr. Pinar discussed about collaborative webinars with partner universities, in which I think that uh, our institution, St. Dominic College of Asia, is also doing, uh, doing its part. Like now, this international webinar is a collaboration between uh, different higher education institutions uh, in Bangladesh, in Turkey, and in the Philippines. And one of the most important highlights of her discussion is about the online mobilization through mobile applications. I think 
uh, because the current trend now is our students is more adapted to using uh, mobile technologies such as applications, mobile applications. I think this could be a good benchmark for us to do uh, a mobile app for us to integrate our teaching and learning delivery through mobile applications. So what do we realize with the discussion of Dr. Pinar? That uh, really hybrid learning is now the trend because of uh, this pandemic, we have seen that hybrid learning face-to-face -face and, uh, uh, and the application of online education and online technologies, we really see that hybrid uh, learning is really on the trend. We can all, I can also see that we can do mobilization even if it is in more online mode. We can do international mobilization of our students even in online by doing international visual tours, international webinars, international talks. I think that as our students, both uh, at, at both ends, the Philippine and the international setting, will benefit with these benchmarks. And lastly, the greatest uh, realization above all is that Education is now borderless. It transcends to every country. It now transcends to uh, every type of student, either you're a Filipino, an, uh, an ASEAN student, or a European student. We can now collaborate and harness co interprofessional collaboration with one another through borderless education. So with this, uh, it is my, in behalf of the St. Dominic College of Asia administration, it is my greatest honor to... I uh, think Mr. Sayed Raihan Ul As Islam and Dr. Pinar El Basan. Thank you very much for gracing our international webinar for today. Shukran, maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Roland. Thank you for your very insightful remarks. Thank you, Professor Sardan, for that comprehensive synthesis of our webinar. Now we would like to express our gratitude to today's guests. We would like to present this certificate to our dear speakers. The citation reads, Certificate of Appreciation is presented to Mr. Sayed Rehan Ul Islam, Assistant Director of International Affairs of Dafutil International University, Dhaka, Bangladesh, for sharing his expertise and valuable knowledge as a speaker during Dominic Connect webinar at St. Dominic College of Asia, with the topic Digitalization for Institutional Sustainability, Bangladesh and Turkey Perspective. Given this 24th day of October 2020 at St. Dominic Complex, Emilio Aguinaldo Highway, City of Bacoor, Cavite, Philippines. Signed by Professor Anthony R. Marin, Program Chair of College of Pharmacy, and Dr. Joel G. Matanis, Dean of School of Health Science Profession. And for our second speaker, thank the you, citation reads, um, for our second speaker, the citation reads, Certificate of Appreciation is presented to Dr. Pinar Elbasan, General Coordinator, Euras Erasmus Plus International, Coordinator of Istanbul Aydan University, Istanbul, Turkey, for sharing her expertise and valuable knowledge as a speaker during the Dominic Connect webinar at St. Dominic College of Asia with the topic Digitalization for Institutional Sustainability, Bangladesh and Turkey perspective, given this 24th day of October 2020 at St. Dominic Complex E. Aguinaldo Highway, City of Bacoor, Cavite, Philippines. Signed by Professor Anthony R. Marin, Program Chair, College of Pharmacy, and Dr. Joel G. Matamis, Dean, School of Health Science Professions. Thank you very Thank much for our speakers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to all the audience and everyone from St. Dominique College of Asia. Thank you. To formally close today's webinar, may we call the program chair of BS Nursing, Professor Dennis Sison. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Sayed Ralhan Ul Islam the Assistant Director of International Affairs, Dafudil International University, Dhaka, Bangladesh, and Dr. Pinar El Basan, General Coordinator, Euras Erasmus Plus International, and Coordinator, Istanbul Aydin University, Istanbul, Turkey, for sharing to our academic community and to the world your perspective and best practices on digitalization of institutional sustainability. 
I would also like to thank everyone who are watching all over the world via YouTube Live, especially in Turkey, Bangladesh, and here in the Philippines. In behalf of St. Dominic College of Asia, thank you very much. This is Professor Dennis Sison, Program Chair of DS Nursing in St. Dominic College of Asia. This era indeed a great challenge in all humankind. We are caught unaware that in our lifetime, this pandemic and experience will happen. It affects a lot of people, not only to their health, but also to a lot of industries and businesses. And one of the most affected is the educational industry. Many school closes just a few months after this pandemic happens because of a low enrollment and such schools are still in traditional modes of teaching and learning environment and they're not ready to face this kind of challenge. But we may not forget the positive aspect of this experience that we need to be thankful for. It happens wherein we are now in this age, the age of internet and the limitless. We are all connected by the internet. Our physical world may now seem so small, but if we look into a digital perspective, it may seem limitless or borderless. We can reach wherever and whenever we want, even beyond our wildest imagination, just at the tip of our fingertips, even in the comfort of our homes. Like this kind of exchange of ideas and information, like this webinar, we had an opportunity to meet and connect in real time, even we are miles away from each other. I am amazed with the best practices that were shared by our guests when it comes to being digitalized to sustain an institution. Bangladesh and Turkey also are doing their excellent job to keep the need of the world in sustaining the institution through the power of digitalization. Digitalization for institutional sustainability is very vital in this period. We are now in a digital world. Industries and institutions must open to change and shift their system from a traditional paper and pen modes of communication and structure into a computer and digitalized environment. The educational system must be the first institution to utilize and ship into digitalization. Just like in our school, the St. Dominic College of Asia is a digital campus college. The management planned and looked in advance a few years ago and opened to change and transform our teaching and learning experience and we are all prepared for the future and the challenges of this age. We are grateful that through the knowledge and skills of our expert in digital field of our digital campus, it becomes possible and utilized and enjoyed by the whole academic community. And this is now the reason, even this period happened, our school, the St. Dominic College of Asia, has very strong and sustainable foundation in our educational system. This is because our school, by the brilliant ideas and collaborative effort, and dedication of our leaders and being true to our goals in giving the best and quality education to our students, we stand strong and tested by time. Indeed, we in St. Dominic College of Asia are still open to change and continue learning and open to the challenges of the future. The entire community must embrace the change and willing to learn new things for the betterment of the institution what they work for. And we are St. Dominic College of Asia are being practiced. With this, allow me to close this webinar with this quote by Jeff uh, Bezos, the founder of Amazon. In today's era of volatility, there is no other way but to reinvent. The only sustainable advantage you can have over others is agility. That's it, because nothing else is sustainable. Everything else you create, somebody will replicate. Again, thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you, Professor Dennis Sison. Again, we would like to remind everyone before you leave today's webinar, we would appreciate it if you complete the evaluation form and send us your feedback for today's event. You will receive an e-certificate afterwards. The link will be flashed on your screen and is available in the comment section. On behalf of the School of Health Science Professions of St. Dominic College of Asia, thank you for joining us today and have a great day.